Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to discuss with you some math strategies that you can use for your classroom. These are some that I've learned while studying for the Praxis 5001 series and at WGU and I thought I'd like to share with you guys. Before I get started, don't forget to like and subscribe. First strategy is positive interactions. What do I mean by this? A lot of times math in particular can be a very daunting subject. Even as adults, sometimes I still get a little bit of math anxiety. But you know, once I know how to do math, it's so easy and it's really fun for me and it really just gets um, the creative juices flowing. Um, so talking positively can really ease anxiety for students. You can talk about your abilities, their abilities, lots of encouragement and feedback. Um, connecting to the real world as much as possible is also beneficial. You can use visuals, anchor charts, and manipulatives. Here's a really fun activity that you can do to get kids excited about math and using a real world application. Math about me. There's so many different activities and ways that you can use this. And I highly recommend using this in your classroom. Math about me is super fun. It's for all ages and it'll really encourage kids to get excited about math. The next strategy I highly recommend is having math discussions. This is important for academic language and math development in students. So there are loads of different things that you can do. You can do some group work. You can do some games, interactive games maybe. You can do some songs. Um, you can do movement. You can do some think, pair, share. So there's lots of different activities with this. Um, I like also equation time. Um, where students write down an equation they think of and the class kind of discusses it at length. Um, I've actually seen this done um, in a classroom that I was recently in and I thought this was the coolest thing. Number talks are also popular. Um, it's basically where you give a number problem, the students solve it, then they share strategies, and then you kind of discuss as a whole group. When you're giving problems for students to solve, personalize them, make it more engaging for them. And you can do this by using characters that they're familiar with, maybe in books or TV, even using students' names or another type of real world application is a great way to get students um, involved in math learning. Um, talk about problem solving steps. Um, I recommend using acronyms for that um, because it'll really help students to memorize those certain steps. Um, this is great to bring up some warm up activities or review as well. And it's also a great way to ask open-ended questions um, where students really get to explain their reasoning and how they got to this particular answer or whatever. Um, asking those questions is crucial in personalize their learning for them. So teachers, I know that we tend to make mistakes. If you make a mistake during a math lesson, it's okay. Actually make it a teachable moment. We'll give students the chance to see what it's like to have a growth mindset. Um, call them mathematicians, um, very similar to in science class when you're calling them little scientists, you can call them little mathematicians um, and teach them that this is what happens. You know, sometimes as mathematicians, we make mistakes, but we learn from our mistakes and it helps us to grow. Um, another thing you can do is add the word yet at the end of phrases. I can't do this yet as a popular phrase, and it's a phrase I often use to myself as well. Um, but just having a growth mindset in the classroom really will help students to um, make better use of learning opportunities and really help them to grow. Word walls really help with visual referencing and building vocabulary. I highly recommend that before you do a word wall, you do like a vocabulary mapping so that students can um, brainstorm definitions and pictures and you can kind of discuss it as a class. Um, but when you're ready to use the word wall, they can be a really fun um, activity for students, um, especially with applying that real world application. Again, is super crucial for math development. You can use index cards. You can do already made cards. There's loads of different ideas out there for creating a math word wall. Um, but as I said, they're really helpful for building vocabulary and as needed, students can always reference them, which is super important as well. 
Centers. If you don't really know, I love centers. I think there's just so many different things you can do with them. You can really provide that hands-on learning, which is beneficial for student learning and, and really engages them as well. Um, besides worksheets, I do think worksheets are important for maybe like practice and drill, but really when it comes to that real world application, you really want to use the center. So you can provide them with games, manipulatives, you can incorporate other subjects. Um, and while your students are going through group rotations, you can even have a chance to do some small group intervention for students who are struggling in some particular areas. Just like reading journals, you also have math journals, which is important to use in your classroom. You can have students answer problems or respond to questions in them. You can kind of make them very interactive. Um, you can have them write questions um, that they have about math or some personal experiences that they've interacted with maybe at home. Um, it's really great for class discussions too. Math journals are so um, engaging for students when they're learning math. This next strategy is something that I actually kind of made up because I got inspired by reading conferences um, in my other video, which I will link down below or have it up here um, about the reading strategies you can use in your classroom. But similar to a reading conference, a math conference is a great one-on-one -on -one time to understand a individual student's strengths and weaknesses and how they are doing in math um, and maybe with a particular concept as well. You can talk about their goals um, and how they can take steps to accomplish them and how you'll act as a guide and interventionist when needed. You can document and monitor their progress, maybe assess some certain skills that they're working on. This is also a great way to further ask them questions and kind of build on skills as well. As I'm sure you're aware, using math and other subjects is so important because it goes back to the real world application. Um, there are so many creative ways you can use math for any kind of subject. So reading, science, social studies, even art and PE of all things. <laughs> I have seen some really cool activities that you can do in the classroom when using math. Um, and this is great, again, because it really gets students engaged and involved, reduces that test anxiety as kids start to have fun with math. The last strategy I have for you is Bloom's Taxonomy. Using this in the classroom, not just for math, but for other subjects as well, is a great way to promote critical thinking and assess student learning. Um, you've got remembering, understanding, uh, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Um, I think personally, putting them on uh, popsicle sticks, like lots of different questions from each of these, and keeping them handy in the classroom is great to really assess student learning and um, promote that critical response questioning, whether you use it in discussions or the math journals, or even as a warm-up exercise, um, is a great way to get kids involved in math. So I have some free resources that I will link down below if you're interested. These are things I have discussed in this video just to help get you started as you begin to plan math strategies in your classroom. The first is um, some graphic organizers. We have order of operations an organizer for word problems. We also have some for math vocabulary. This is helpful before you get started on that word wall that I mentioned. And the next one is sharing three ways or strategies. Um, great for discussions. This is something that I actually created and I wanted to include this for you. The next set of freebies we have is for Math Center. So we've got this cute place value game with some Uno cards. Uh, the next one is a back to school Math Center. So this is like a set of uh, centers activities for you. The next is some ge geometry shape riddles. And the last one is some counting coins memory match game. Uh, the next set of freebies I have for you is some math integration activities. So pairing math with a different subject. First one we have is the types of angles name art activity. I thought this was super cool and a really fun way to get kids engaged in math. The next one is a STEM experiment using pumpkins and math, which is super cute and fun for fall. And the last one is just sort of like a Christmas holiday kind of one with social studies and it's called the Reindeer Road Trip. Next up, we have some anchor charts to really help get you started with math strategies in the classroom. This is perfect for decor. Um, we've got some math keywords that students will often see when they come across in word problems and math discussions as well. This acronym is called CUBES, and it's a great way to help students um, with their problem solving and key steps. 
The next is a fraction wall, very similar to the manipulatives that kids will be using in the classroom. Next up, we have some math strategies that students can reference as need be. And then I also have some math talks hand signals, which is great for discussions. Instead of asking students to raise their hand, you can ask them to raise a certain hand signal and it'll really engage students. And the last set of freebies I have for you guys are some math conference forms. The first one is Form A. This is one I found on Teachers Pay Teachers. And the next form is Form B. This is one that I actually created and I wanted to include it for you guys. Thank you so much for being a part. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below as well. I hope this helps you as you get to plan your classroom uh, for math and get it all ready. Uh, see you guys again soon. Bye, everyone.